Today I'm unlocking the secrets of lighting and composition, two fundamental tools that can transform your ordinary Blender scenes into horrific masterpieces. And I'll show you how you can go from this to this in just a few clicks. So my colleagues at Game Dev TV recently did a fun battle where three devs battle it out to make a quick horror level. It's well worth watching as it's really good fun. Links to that video are in the description and comments. They did well in the short amount of time, but I think they could have gone a little further. So that's what I'm doing today in Blender. Now I'm sure many of you are aware that horror is about creating atmosphere, but many beginners think it's about the scariness of the models or creating the right grimy textures. Well, yes, that's all part of it, but I would say the absolute key ingredient is the lighting. And many cinematographers will say lighting is the key to all cinematography. So I'm going to show you some really simple tips and tricks to get the best out of your scenes, especially when it comes to lighting. So I'm in Blender 4.0.1 and I've got my screencast keys down the corner here in case you want to see what I'm pressing. I've downloaded this nice hospital toilet scene here. It's all grimy and horrible looking and it's perfect for a horror scene. It's currently got very flat lighting so it makes it a perfect candidate. I've taken the scene from Sketchfab. It's a person called Viet Rock or Veta Rock or however you might pronounce it. And they've got this wonderful hospital. It's got some really nice areas like this corridor down here, which you could experiment with. So thank you to Veta Rock or whatever it might be for this wonderful model. So back into Blender. And the first thing you'll probably want to do is set up your camera. So I've set mine up off to the side here. If I press zero, we can go into camera view and it's just off to the side as if we're kind of hiding behind this cubicle just here. And we're going to have some nasty person creeping around the corner here. So ideally you want to create a story around your scene, no matter how simple it is, it can make a big difference. With horror, it's a good idea to play with the senses. So kind of make it difficult to make out exactly where you are and what's around the corner. So in this case, obscuring the entrance from view makes the scene more tense. One thing I would say about my camera, if I select the camera, I've set it to 35 millimeters. If I set this to 50 millimeters, you can see we're zoomed in. We can't see as much of the space that still works, but I thought it was a little bit better at 35. So let's jump across to the shading workspace and think about the lighting. Now, the first thing you might be tempted to do is just use the lights in the scene. That's perfectly fine if that's the look you're going for. Quick bonus tip, lights that are actually in the scene and in shot are known as practical lights, and they're excellent for adding a bit of atmosphere. Notice when you watch good YouTube creators, they've got these nice lights in the background and it really looks quite nice. So if I try and select the light in the scene, I'll come out of camera view to grab that. There's also a light here at the back as well. I'll jump back to camera view now, but you can see now I've selected that object. I've added a yellow emission color in our principal BSDF just here under the emission section. So a yellowy dingy light and I can just up the strength there. We can't see much effect from that at the moment. I can obviously turn my overlays off and we can see a bit more, but not much. It's because we're in material preview mode at the moment. And that just uses an HDRI in the background to light the scene. I'll go across to the rendered workspace and you can see it's all dark and we've got a bit of the lights now. The reason this light isn't actually giving off any light, even though it's got an emission here, is because EV doesn't allow you to have objects as lights. If I go across to the rendered workspace and change this across to cycles, then you'll actually start to see some lights and we can put up the strength and we're getting that dingy, horrible look, which looks quite effective. I can also use the denoise to take the grain out of the image. Now, for many of you, you might not be able to use cycles so easily because you haven't got a powerful enough machine and it takes a lot of render time. So let's jump across to Eevee and see if we can get a similar effect there. So in order to get these lights to actually light our scene, we're going to actually have to insert some light next to the actual light bulbs. So I'll just come out to camera view and move next to my light. I'll turn on the overlays now, shift right click to move my 3D cursor and shift A to add. And then under light, it would make sense to have an area light here. It's already pointing down, which is nice. And I'll just position this and then scale it so it's a similar size to my light bulb. And somewhere around there looks about right. Now we're still not seeing much effect because it's a very dim light. So if I go across to the lighting settings, I can change this to something like 50 watts and we're suddenly seeing some effect. I can also give it that yellow color for that dingy feel. And although it's not looking as good as cycles, it's a lot better than it was and it's got a bit more atmosphere. Now, because I've taken out this end wall here, we are getting a bit of the background light as well. So I can go across to the shading workspace, across the world tab, and I could bring the strength right down if I wanted to, to give it that sort of horrible dingy feel. And that's certainly a lot more effective. I might want a little bit of ambient light though. So I could just up the strength of this a little bit and we're starting to see some of these areas, maybe to something like 0.4, but I might change this to a more bluey color just to give it a little bit of vibrancy rather than just a really dull gray. And I can just experiment between three and four just here. 
probably three just there looks about right. So already we've got quite a nice scene there and I can copy and paste this light at the back. So shift D in the Y axis and move it back to this point here. So it's roughly underneath the other light You can kind of see the effect that we're getting there. And I'll turn my overlays off so you can see the finished result. Now this looks quite good and it's a good game environment because it adds a lot more atmosphere, but I think we can still push it further. What I'm going to do is take away these lights I've just added. So these two area lights here, I'll just select those and hide them in the render and the viewport. So we're back to kind of square one, although I need to select the light bulb. I'll just turn my overlays on so I can see that and back to the object workspace and let's get rid of the strength of that emission. So we're back to square one again with just a little bit of ambient light in our scene from the world being a dark blue. Ambient light in photography terms is the light the photographer didn't bring with them. So in our case, the world is offering the ambient light, hence why we often use HDRI images to light the scenes with a very natural looking ambient light. And what I want to do is really experiment with the lighting, see if we can get it from a different sort of angle, try something out that's a little bit more unnatural and see if we can get a bit more of a horror look. So I'll come around to the top, it's hard to see, so I'll just hide the top for the moment and add a light to the back here. I'll just go into material preview mode so you can see actually where I'm placing things. So just at the back around the corner here, shift right click to move my 3D cursor, shift eight, add light, and then once again, an area light. I'll tell you why I'm using area lights in just a moment, but I'll set this up into position. So G then Z and then R, Y, 90, oh, minus 90. So just press the minus button and it's pointing out this way. So this light is just round the corner a little bit. I'll up the strength so it's something like 500 watts. So quite powerful. I'll bring back the roof. So Alt H to bring back the roof. That does actually bring back my area lights from earlier. I'm going to select both those and move those into a collection so I can easily hide them. So M to move to new collection, new collection, lights old. And then I'll hide that collection for now. So at the moment, I've just got that light around the corner. I can select it by that line that's going across it there. Let's see what that looks like in rendered view and zero to go into camera view. That's getting a lot more interesting. It's probably a little bit powerful at the moment. So I can turn that down to maybe 300 and let's give it a really sort of horror color, sort of ready color like this. Already we've got a little bit more atmosphere there. There's some intrigue and a bit of story as to what's just around the corner. Maybe something's shining a light in. We've got some really deep shadows now, which makes things feel a bit distorted and that gives it a more horror feel. I might want to play with my camera position a little bit at this point. So I'll press N to bring up my side panel, go to view, lock camera to view, and then just maybe bring it across slightly. I like the thought of being able to see under these toilet cubicles here. We've got some interesting silhouettes being created here. So I quite like this angle. We've got all this blank space here, which in horror is quite a good thing because it makes you focus on this area and wonder what's coming and what's going to be creeping around the corner. And we'll add something in in just a moment. I'll just zoom in with the camera a little bit so we don't have the floor sticking out there and across somewhere around here. I think that looks about right. You could at this stage experiment with the color a little. I like the ready color. We could go a deeper red or maybe even a greeny color across here. And that's more a preference thing. Okay, so can we take this a bit further? So let's experiment with the position of the light a little bit more. So once again, I'll come out to camera view. I'll hide that top roof. In fact, I'll just quickly move that to a new collection so I can easily find it. And let's grab that light and maybe just rotate it slightly, move it a bit more to the door and then a little bit more light coming out here and back to camera view and see how that's looking. Now that's quite interesting. If I bring back the roof, I think I prefer it because it offers a little bit more interest in the actual urinal area, which helps with the grimy feel. Light position is obviously key to creating an exciting effect. One bonus tip here is that having your lights positioned low down can often distort the shadows, making them feel unnatural because most of the time we see things lit from above where the sun is obviously. These distorted shadows can be uncomfortable to look at and are therefore perfect for horror. So it's definitely worth experimenting with the position of the light to see what works best. Now what we might want to look at as well is the materials because the materials can actually reflect light. So if I select the floor material, for example, you can see that the roughness is really high. Let's bring that down. I'll just come out of camera view so we can see that a little bit more clearly. And at the moment, we're not seeing any effect. Now that again is a limitation of EV, unless we go across to the render workspace and turn on the screen space reflections. Now we get this lovely looking reflective floor. It's a bit too much at the moment, and it's a little bit uniform as you can see there. Usually for a P2 
PBR material that's been nicely made, you'd have a roughness map to give this a bit more variation. What we can do is actually just cheat a little and use the base color and just plug that into the roughness. That will certainly give it more variation. And you can see there we've got some reflective bits and some non-reflective bits. I think we've got some bits of tile here as well. We could do exactly the same thing for, so that's got a little bit of variation there as well. Areas like these tiles as well would look quite good. So we can plug that in again to the roughness, these areas as well, see what that does to the roughness. I'm just actually adding a little bit of variation and you can see the effect that's having on that wall space just there. We can actually see our light in the reflection, but we might want a little bit more control over the reflection. So for this area here, for example, I can press Shift A to add, Converter, Color Ramp, move it over that noodle just there, the one that's going into the roughness. So I'll just show you that that's going to the roughness there. And if we want more roughness, then we can bring up the blacks and you can see it going very, very shiny there, which I think works a little bit better. So we might want to do that for some of the other objects as well. Might be a little bit over the top now, so we can move this back to maybe somewhere around here. We can also flip these around, so flip color ramp, and you can see that's probably a bit more effective just there. And I can bring the grout up a little bit and so forth and just play around with the shininess of these areas. And because we've got a bit of shininess on these surfaces, we're getting a bit more reflective light, a bit more interest in our scene. So let's go back to camera view and see how that's looking. Not too bad. Lastly then, we could do with a character in here. The character I've downloaded is from Mixmo. It's this scary guy here. Looks pretty horrendous. And I've given him just a simple idle animation where there's a little bit of movement if I did want to have an animation out of this. And I can just download that. Make sure you download it with skin. And the format I've used is FBX and press the download button. You do have to sign up to Mixamo, but you can use these models for personal use if you want to experiment with them. So back into Blender, file, import FBX. There's my monster just there, import FBX. He's over there at the moment. So let's go back to layout view and find him and put him into position. Make sure you have the armature selected and not the actual body. Otherwise you'll find it difficult to move. I'll just go to top view to start with and move it to roughly there. Let's make sure they are above the floor, about there. R then Z 180, so they're staring at us. Might want them slightly bigger, so they're a bit more imposing, as if they can just fit through the door. So that's without lighting. And then we go across the material preview mode and turn the overlays off. We've got a pretty horrendous looking character just there. Let's go to camera view. Can't see him at the moment. Click on the armature and just press G then X to move them across a bit, maybe forward a bit, G then Y. And actually, if I bring them forward to about there, we've got this lovely shadow on the wall as well. It's a little bit obvious just there, so I might just bring them across to the side as if they're coming around the corner. A little bit more subtle, maybe move the camera so we can just see a little bit of this person. Tricky to say. For a thumbnail, I suppose, I probably want to see this person a little bit more, make it a little bit more obvious. But in a horror sense, you probably want a little bit more subtlety. So the position of the scary person or creature is going to be important. In this particular case, I'm showing off the whole creature because it's a still image and a thumbnail. So like a movie poster would show you the monster most of the time. But generally in horror, you want the user to use their imagination. And therefore you don't really want to show too much of the creature or beast. Often the unknown is actually more scary. Now at the moment, this shadow isn't looking great. It's a bit distorted. There's two things we can do. I'll come out to camera view and I'll hide my roof once again so we can see the light and turn my overlays on and select the light. Now, if you look at the shadow at the moment, it's a little bit soft. And in fact, Evie's struggling with the softness, as you can see there. If I change the size of this area light, and you can do this nice and easily with area lights, Watch what happens to the shadow if I make that very, very small. It sharpens the shadow up and gives it a much more horror look. So the smaller the light, the harder the shadows. Bonus tip for you, the artistic use of shadow is known as chiaroscuro. It is the effective use of light and dark spaces in your artwork. So how we work with the shadows cast from the light can be very important. And because our light is nice and low, the shadows from the monster is very big and imposing. What we can do as well to try and help in Eevee is under the shadow settings, you can turn your cube size up. The default is 512. You can turn the cube size up to as high as it will go and turn on a high bit depth. That should help improve the quality of the shadows. 
You might be tempted to turn up the cascade size here, but that's actually for sun lamps, so don't worry about that. The cube size is for all other lights. There are a couple of more things we could possibly do. They won't make too much difference in this case, but we might want to turn on something like bloom so that really bright spots will have a bit of bloom to them but that's not making a huge amount of difference. You can see a bit on the sinks back there. The ambient occlusion as well can offer a little bit, not making much difference. We can turn that up a little bit, but to be honest, we're not seeing much effect of that because the main light source is having such an impact on our scene. But I really like the way this is looking. Let's have a quick look at what it would look like in cycles. I must admit, I do like the look of cycles. It looks fantastic. The shadow's a bit clearer. We've got a little bit more ambient light bouncing around. If I put the roof back on as well, we might see a little bit more light bouncing off the roof and coming onto the floor here, which is very nice, but we're not too far off with EV just here, which goes to show what you can do just by effectively positioning your lights. Let's go back to camera view and take a quick look at our scene there. And that's looking really nice. Now, if I do a quick render with F12, and let's actually bring back the roof, that would help. That looks quite effective, I would say. But again, just for a still image, we can certainly take this a bit further with the compositor. If you want to learn more about the compositor in Blender, I have a video about the compositor. I'll put a link in the description if you want to take a look at that. So I'll close this down, go across to compositing, use nodes. I press period key on my numpad to zoom into the selected nodes. This will only show up if you have a rendered image. So do remember to render your image. And let's just position these and get a viewer node in here. So I'll control shift left click on the rendered layer to bring up my viewer node. You must have the node wrangler add-on installed. So edit preferences add-ons, type in node, and make sure node wrangler is ticked. I do wish that was ticked by default. And close that down. Now I can press control shift and left click on objects and have them plug straight into the viewer node. I'll press N to get rid of the side panel. And I'll just bring these across a little bit so we can see our scene just there. If I press shift A to add, we can start adding in or adjusting the color. So under color and adjust, we've got things like color correction and color balance. So if I put the color balance in here, bring that over to here so we can just about see the background. This is a bit confusing, but you can just generally have a little bit of a play with this. So things like the lift, I want to just lift maybe the oranges in here, make the scene a tiny bit brighter. Just bringing out some of these areas, we could even go across to the greens and make it a little bit more sort of dusty looking almost. It's quite amazing what you can experiment with here. And I can just kind of play around with these settings. I must admit, I wish I knew a little bit more about this, but I tend to just play around and see what I can come up with when I'm pulling these colors in and out and the values in and out. You can have lots of fun with these sort of things. Do remember though, you will need to hook this up to your final composite so it actually renders out with this as well, not just in the viewer node just there. So let's press F12 again and see what we've got. And we've got a really great looking horror scene just there. And that is how we managed to get to this scary looking scene here. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you've got this far, well done to you. If you haven't already, please like and maybe subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.